Now on BBC One, Northwest Tonight, with Gordon Burns. Good evening, welcome to the programme. The headlines this Tuesday evening. Police hunt for the killer who strangled a young mother, leaving her three-year-old son alone with the body. Manchester's Mardi Gras organisers under fire after charities receive nothing from this year's event. People in Lowergate hear the scream like a... Aah! And the spine-chilling sounds of Lancashire's spookiest ghost walks. The organisers of Manchester's Mardi Gras have been told the city's gay community no longer has any faith in them. Businesses and community groups are furious that this year's record attendance event failed to raise a single penny for charity. They say thousands of people who bought £10 wristbands at the Mardi Gras were under the impression part of that money was going to charity. In a moment I'll be talking to the event coordinator, but first this report from Jill Dummigan. It's been described as Britain's biggest lesbian and gay festival. It attracts visitors from all over the world, and it's become an established event on Manchester's social calendar. This year's Mardi Gras pulled in around 300,000 people, with events like the Lavender Ball and the City Centre Parade. But with the heat of the summer celebrations now just a distant memory, some of the charities traditionally associated with Mardi Gras are wondering why they bothered to get involved. The George House Trust is a support organisation for people with HIV and AIDS. In the past years, Mardi Gras raised tens of thousands of pounds for them. This year, they're getting nothing. We've been hit by a triple whammy on this one. Uh, that is that Mardi Gras failed to deliver the funds that uh, it, it thought it could deliver. Uh, secondly, that we didn't raise for ourselves over that period because we left it to the professionals who were Mardi Gras. And thirdly, because despite having known for some months the dire state of their finances, they've not communicated to us. So we've carried on spending. Some say the organisers simply wasted money on showy effects, like £25,000 on artists and performers, £21,000 on a big screen video, and £12,000 which went up in smoke on fireworks. 45,000 people paid for a pledge band, and I rightly believe that all of them people knew or thought that £5 of that money, or £5 less fat, was going to charity. If they'd have known it was to pay for the party, I very much doubt they'd have bought the pledge bands. More than 20 businesses and community groups in the gay village have already passed a vote of no confidence in the Mardi Gras committee. They're now demanding a meeting next week to find out just what did go wrong. Jill Dunnigan, North West Tonight, Manchester. Well, I'm joined in the studio by Ian Wilmot, the coordinator of the Mardi Gras. Um, Mr Wilmot, attacked by uh, two charities, a vote of no confidence passed in you last night by a whole range of businesses. You or your organisation seem to have got this year's event badly wrong. Well, I think we need to put things into some perspective. I mean, for instance, the meeting that's been referred to, we had no knowledge of. We had no chance of having any input into that meeting. And I've spoken to at least five representatives of, co of uh, community groups today who also didn't know about the meeting. But I think what we do need to do is to look very long and hard about what Mardi Gras is, how well, it's what funded. is it? Is it a fundraising event or is it just a big party? Well, I think what, what we have in Manchester, what we should be very proud of, is we have a huge showcase for the city and for the lesbian and gay community in this city. But is it a fundraising event or it's is it a both. party? It's both. And I think I should stress that we are as disappointed as the groups that have put forward these I, uh, ideas. There's no tension between the Mardi Gras team. But it's failed if it's, it's a fundraising group and it hasn't raised any money for charity. It's a question of simple economics. We need to fund Mardi Gras to pay for the infrastructure. Once we've done that, once we've paid the bills, all of the money surplus to that will be given over to charities. This year that's not happened. Because you've spent so much on security. We've spent so much in a whole host of uh, areas, but, se but uh, security was the number one pri uh, but if you're spending so much on security and you're trying to raise funds for charity, why, why spend £25,000 on artists, £21,000 on a big screen video and £12,000 on fireworks that go up in smoke? Well, it'd be pointless to, ch to actually cherry-pick through an event. But there needs to be a balance of both content and the safety measures that are brought in place. But what I'd like to say is Perfect. I'd rather be sat here announcing that there's a demise in the Good Causes Fund than an appeal for donations to families of people who'd lost people in some crowd crush. Safety has to come first. Mr Wilmot, thank you very much indeed for joining thank us. Thank you.